tonight for the Coastal Intertidal Zone Archaeological Network, or CITIZEN. We're a heritage lottery funded intertidal community archaeology project that works around the coast of England. We have three offices, uh, one in the north, one in the southeast, one in the southwest. Um, we cover a vast range of periods and features, anything that you find on the coast really. Everything from the Mesolithic all the way up to the Cold War, from prehistoric footprints and mammoth tusks all the way up to anti-invasion defences. Um, today though, I am going to be talking about uh, submerged forests. Submerged forests are fairly common around the coast of uh, England and around the coast of the United Kingdom. Um, there are two very famous submerged forests down here in Wales, one at Gold Cliff on the Severn Estuary and one in West Wales in Borth. Uh, they're outside of our area though, so I'm in particular going to be talking about the submerged forest in Cleethorpes. Um, submerged forests were formed during the last glaciation when the sea level uh, around the coast was about 130 to 150 metres lower than it is today with all of that seawater tied up in the big ice sheets that were across the country. Uh, and the ensuing land space was taken up with an area of grasslands and trees. So this is the submerged forest at Cleethorpes. It's uh, uncovered at low tide and underwater at high tide. Environmental analysis has suggested that this particular forest was a dense oak forest and it dates to the late Neolithic early Bronze Age. So these are two of our volunteers recording one of the uh, elements of the forest. This is a set of uh, oak tree roots which they're just about to go and record. Uh, for everybody that's unfamiliar with Cleethorpes, uh, Cleethorpes is at the mouth of the Humber on the northeast Lincolnshire coast and is economically and culturally dominated by Grimsby. It's a really poor area of the country, uh, the second poorest area of the country in England, the fifth poorest area in the UK when you start to take in places like uh, the valleys in Wales. Submerged forests are one of the earliest recorded uh, types of uh, archaeological features. So this very austere gentleman is Gerald of Wales, famous for writing his travels around Wales when he was recruiting during the, uh, during the Crusades in the 12th century. Uh, he saw a submerged forest as he was going across New Gale Bay and he thought that it was a symbol of the Great Flood and he included it in his recruiting speech. You will do God's work and you will go and kill the heathen or this will happen to you again. Um, this gentleman is Samuel Pepys, uh, secretary to the Admiralty, famous diarist, cheese barrier, um, all sorts of interesting things Mr Pepys did. He also in his diary wrote about discovering a submerged forest on the banks of the Thames when he, was gone, when he went to Shea a forest that was identified by somebody digging up a dockyard and he scientifically recorded the nuts that he identified from this particular tree. He described them as being soft and rotten on the outside but nice and hard on the inside. He still thinks though that they're a symbol of the wrath of God, probably tied into the Great Fire of London and still very religious. Um, they are surprisingly well recorded, the submerged forests in Lincolnshire. This gentleman is Joseph de Co Joseph Correa de Serra. Sorry, my Spanish is absolutely appalling. Um, he was a Portuguese uh, bishop who fled persecution in the continent during the 18th century and he came over to London, joined the Royal Society and came and had a look at the submerged forests in Lincolnshire. He describes them as islands of moors and he identifies oak, birch and fir trees within these uh, moorhands. Uh, he though doesn't think they're part of the wrath of God. He thinks that the only way that this area can have been created is by a massive earthquake which has significantly lowered the ground level around the area. Um, it's only when you get into the late uh, 19th, early 20th century that you get the idea that you actually get glaciation and coastal flooding when all that glacial water melts. You do still get though the submerged forests noted as biblical references. So this is the Ordnance Survey map for Withensea which is just on the East Yorkshire coast and you can see that 
the submerged forest here is referred to as Noah's Wood. Uh, this is still an idea that is prevalent in Lincolnshire in the 1970s. In the 1970s, they are looking at covering the submerged forest uh, around Skegness with a huge quantity of sand to improve the quality of the beach. And there was a movement in the local papers that this shouldn't happen because the submerged forest was a definitive indicator of the Great Flood and you were covering up God's work. Uh, to say that Lincolnshire is a little bit backwards <laughs> is not an understatement. Um, in, the in the late 19th, early 20th century, submerged forests became an example of tourism. So you have Victorian postcards where you're encouraging people to come out and have a look at these submerged forests and you get guided tours of the submerged forests. So this is moles uh, on the Liverpool coast and this is actually Cleethorpes that we're talking about today in the 1920s where these gentlemen in their plus fours are being led around the foreshore by a gentleman with the excellent name of Todd Holler. Um, in the 1950s, I should apologise for the quality of the photograph, this is a scan from the Grimsby uh, Telegraph. I would draw your attention to the photograph on the right hand side. This is a health and safety tip. Appropriate footwear is crucial if you are going to go and visit the foreshore. Uh, this lady turned up in her kitten heels, not very useful. Um, this however is the Mayor and Mayoress of Cleethorpes and Sheffield. They go on to the foreshore and they cut up the submerged forest to use as a modern resource. They are carving the coat of arms of Sheffield into a plank and it is hung in Sheffield Museum. Uh, why Sheffield? Because Cleethorpes is the trip town for Sheffield Steel and Coal Works. So that's where all of the workers go to for their week holiday when everything closes down and they're trying to cement that relationship between uh, the seaside and the industrial relations. This is quite a uh, occasion, there are a hundred people who come and watch them do their thing on the foreshore and it is uh, filmed and shown in the local news. In 1958 uh, this is the Queen and Prince Philip on a tour of Grimsby and Cleethorpes. Uh, the Queen is presented with two wooden caskets which are made out of the oak and they have a little brass plaque written on them which states that this has come from 3,000 year old oak timber. This is an excellent example of corporate one-upmanship. The uh, town of Grimsby presented a five and a half foot long uh, hand and half sword which was a replica of one given to uh, Edward I by Grimsby. So Cleethorpes thinks well you've got something nice and old we'll give you something a little bit older. Um, they also make uh, crucifixes and caskets out of them. So this is a local uh, gentleman who has a sideline of making uh, crucifixes out of 3,000 year old oak timber. Uh, the council also at this point take a complete submerged tree and mount it on the side of a public toilet. Um, not quite sure what that's saying but they are trying to advertise the fact that they've got this submerged forest and that you should come and have a look at it. Um, the making of material out of submerged forests, when we started making this paper we thought that it was going to be a fairly wide phenomenon, it was going to be something that you would find around the coast of England. It turns out that it isn't. It turns out as far as we know it is a pretty unique phenomena to Cleethorpes, except for when you go across to Ireland. In Ireland it is remarkably common. So this is a bog oak uh, from a place called Cady Fields uh, in the very west of Ireland um, and making objects out of bog oak in Ireland is something which happens for a very long time. So in the uh, Great Exhibition of Dublin in 1853 there are souvenirs made from bog oak excavated during the uh, construction of a local railway station a local railway line. Um, the only place that we can see this happening um, is at the Millennium Dome uh, at the turn of the century. When they were excavating the Millennium Dome uh, down in Greenwich in London they came across these lovely big pieces of bog oak and they cut them up and they carved them 
and they turned them into key rings which they then sold. This is the only example that we can find in the rest of England. So if anybody does know of another example, uh, we'd dearly love to know. Uh, please do tell me because we'd like to find out. Um, so why are they doing that? Why are they making this material out of uh, prehistoric timber? Well, it's quite interesting because Cleethorpes doesn't actually exist as a town until the 19th century and the railway company builds this lovely pier in the background and promotes it as a seaside village. Prior to that, it's three teeny little hamlets which are completely dominated by Grimsby. So we think that they are using the prehistoric timber to give themselves a sense of identity and give themselves a sense of deep path, a sense of deep time. This is an idea which is enhanced when you go to the local museum. There is a local museum in Grimsby which has nothing in it which is earlier than the 1800s. There was prehistoric archaeology here in the Victorian period. There were half a dozen Bronze Age burial cairns. They were all destroyed by the construction of the railway and the construction of Grimsby docks when the large fishing fleets moved in. So we think it's an example of them trying to anchor themselves to their past and demonstrate that they're different from Grimsby because they have this deeper, more prehistoric culture going on. Thank you very much.